It's pretty tough since the earthquake. Things have everything, not just housing, but food has gone up, and yeah, it's just not possible. It was hard because I've got anxiety, so it was really hard with the earthquakes. I didn't like being on my own. I've been in this community for a long time now, and I've noticed, particularly in the last five years post earthquake, things have become exponentially more challenging for families in the east of Christchurch, if not all of New Zealand. Six and a half years after Christchurch was shaken to its core, life for many families in the east of the city is still a struggle. Before the quakes, Shah Hotter and her seven-year-old son Michael had their own house not far from Linwood North Primary School. But skyrocketing rents caused by the destruction of so many local houses forced them to leave their house and move in with Shah's terminally ill aunt. Um, before moving in with my auntie, it was quite hard. Well, I'd be able to pay all my bills but not have enough money to maybe buy enough food for the week to last us. Carrie Ede has a similar story. She and her two children share a property with two other families simply to make ends meet. We pay 450 uh, board. That's market rent now in, a, in this neighbourhood or in Christchurch. How much does it have you left over for the rest of your... Maybe 100 $150. And that's got to pay for the car, you know, the petrol for the car and all the other expenses the children have and, and that we have that pop up. I mean, if something like the car breaks down, we're kind of, we're screwed. Neither mother smokes or drinks and both say that when the food runs out, it's they who go without rather than their children. Absolutely. Yeah, that's what you do when you're a parent and you're on a low budget. Um, the kids don't go out with anything. If anything was to run out, the adults or we would go without before they would. The two mums also have something else in common. Their reliance on their kids' school to help out with food and raincoats and shoes when their budgets reach breaking point. They help us with jackets when it's raining and it really helps so then we're not cold and stuff. Well, when you're hungry, you can't learn. So we're able to come, for some children who come to school with no breakfast, we're able to provide the food. So we're filling a real need. Sandra Smith says most of the food the school receives is provided by the Kids Can charity. But despite an 11-year relationship, the need now is greater than ever. Absolutely, it's getting more and more necessary. In fact, I couldn't think what it would be like to lead the school community without the Kids Can resources. Kids Can CEO Julie Chapman says her charity now supports 700 schools and a record 30,000 children every week. But with another 17 schools on the waiting list, the need continues to grow. In terms of food need, in 2011, on average it was 11% of a school roll that needed food. It's now 22%. So the need has increased. Our purpose is to meet the immediate needs of children living in hardship and poverty so that in the future they do have a better opportunity and don't go on to repeat the cycle of poverty. Back in the playground, Sandra's students are taking a break from their studies. But behind the scenes, the critical task of making sure every kid has the fuel to concentrate and learn whatever the circumstances at home is unrelenting. I believe there's absolutely genuine poverty in this community that can't be helped by the families that are living in it. And it's time for the rest of New Zealand to really wake up to the fact that many of our children are not getting the lives that we had when we were children.